finest available materials and B, superb engineering, every last bolt and bracket must itself be a work of art. So Davide Pizzo has had to quickly learn to think both like an engineer and an artist, starting with the overall shape of the car, which is inspired by a great example of form and function in harmony, the wing of an aircraft. So he imagined an ellipse in the front and an ellipse at the back that uh, were united in some way. This was to be the body of the car, onto which the wheel arches were hooked to the sides. From that simple sketch, the long road to the finished design began. From computer screens, to a series of scale models, to a full-sized wooden wirer. Pagani asked us to completely clear the finishing area, so the machines were taken outside, the trolleys were moved, and he positioned the model of the car in the middle of the room. I remember that Pagani spent, I would say, many hours sitting in different positions around the car because he had to understand the shape of the car from every angle. It is only with the one-to-one -one scale model that you have a complete perception of the shapes and how the lines run. For example, this line that we have been watching for a long time should be more pronounced. At every step along the way, Davide and the design team must think how each small change will affect both the look of the car and its physics, the aerodynamics. Like a virtual wind tunnel, these computer graphics simulate airflow and highlight areas of drag and downforce. Later, the results can be confirmed in a real wind tunnel. For a high-performance car, you want to maximize downforce but minimize drag. The problem for Arazio is that most high-performance cars achieve the downforce they need with what he sees as a great big compromise, a rear wing or spoiler. The Sonda is no exception. At high speed, its huge rear spoiler helps glue the car to the road. But for his new perfect car, Arazio wants completely smooth, uninterrupted lines. To achieve this, he's ripping up the rulebook of sports car aerodynamics. With a solution, if successful, worthy of da Vinci. Inspired like the car itself by the wing of an aircraft, Arazio has designed a system of four independently operating aerodynamic flaps. And what better place to test it than at one of the fastest tracks on the planet? Four flaps are automatically controlled by the car's onboard computer, providing extra grip from downforce only when you need it. You can achieve a downforce using spoilers and wheels. But the problem is that spoilers and wheels are always on the car. Horatio's active aerodynamics remove that compromise. As the wire rockets off down the main straight, the flaps are kept down. This minimizes the drag and maximizes acceleration, and the low drag helps achieve a top speed of 370 kilometers an hour. But equally important to a quick lap time here at Monza is how late you can brake, how fast you can slow down. So as soon as Davide's foot hits the brake pedal, the flaps automatically rise. Just like the flaps on an aircraft wing, they become high-drag air brakes. 
while maximizing downforce to get the most out of the tires. But it's on the corners that the system really comes into its own, making full independent use of the four wing flaps. On a high-speed corner, a car tends to roll, the weight is thrown outwards, and the inside tires lose grip, meaning you must slow down or spin off. Horatio's active aerodynamics are uniquely capable of dealing with this problem. As the wire enters a fast corner, all four flaps rise to create more downforce for overall grip. But the inside flaps rise higher, counteracting the tendency to roll which is not only much safer, it's also much faster. If it catches on, this innovation could change the look of all sports cars for the next generation. A technical solution better than a rear spoiler that also delivers the pure, uninterrupted lines that Arazio so wants for this car and a perfect example of the philosophy of art and engineering that he's been pursuing since childhood. The son of an Argentinian baker, Horatio spent his childhood dreaming of building Italian supercars. In 1984, he got a job at Lamborghini and moved to Modena, where he quickly became an expert in a new aerospace wonder material being used in sports cars for the first time. Over time, I made friends with carbon fiber, an extremely technological material. Of course, at the beginning, it seemed to me like something from outer space. When he built his factory in 1991, Pagani started out as a composites company, designing and building components for the industry. Composites have unrivaled strength-to-weight ratio and the versatility to produce extraordinary objects of desire. So remaining a world master of this material is essential to Arazio's mission to create a perfect car. Today, the responsibility for keeping Arazio's composites on the cutting edge falls to one of his most loyal young protégés. I like working with composites because it is a very beautiful material. It's Roberto's mission to make the wireless composite components the best in the world. Starting with a unique soft fabric produced only for Pagani, carbon threads from Japan are woven together in Germany, then soaked in resin in Italy. Only Pagani knows the whole recipe. The result is our unique carbon fiber, our fabric. In a workshop resembling a Savile Row tailor, Roberto's process of laying up the fabric into molds looks straightforward. But attention to detail here is crucial to the end result. Then, each component is vacuum packed for baking. Here we are at the autoclave, which is an old friend to me, because without this machine, we would not be able to produce our beautiful car. As an expert cook, Roberto knows the exact time, pressure, and temperature required to harden each part. After two hours at 135 degrees Celsius, these ones are baked to perfection. Roberto inspects every baked piece, and if it meets with his approval, it's sent off to the nastiest place in the factory, the trim station, where Alessio needs full body protection and breathing apparatus to keep potentially lethal carbon dust out of his lungs. Before painting, the composite components are assembled into the skeleton of one of the first customer wires. It's a standard step to make sure that it all fits together. But here, there's a difference. This is where Roberto's meticulous care pays off, because every seam of carbon fiber weave must line up perfectly, and if it doesn't, the part will be rejected. The quality is so good, 
many customers choose to have large areas of polished, unpainted carbon composite as part of their final design. And of course, Horatio has approved each component as a perfectly designed piece of art and engineering, with exactly the strength, weight and aesthetic form he wants. This piece supports the seat from under it. This is a piece Pagani is very happy with. This is because if one day a client drops a penny and he looks for it under the seat, this piece is beautiful. As a committed perfectionist, Horatio's hands-on approach is understandable. But to build this car, he will rely on dozens of outside suppliers to build the remaining 95% of its components. And he can't exert the same control over them. Or can he? On the far side of Modena lies an aluminium factory. Ten years ago, this company decided to try and win Pagani's business. Little realizing just what they were letting themselves in for. Or how it would transform their lives. Not least, for this man. Benvenuti in Aspa. Welcome to Aspa. This is our old factory where we produce pieces for aeroplanes, products for the nautical industry and other products as well. It's efficient and functional, but also dirty, noisy and smelly. Not really in line with the Pagani way of doing things. But this is. Ecco, questo è il nostro nuovo reparto. To convince Horatio that they were the company to produce his aluminium components, Asper built a completely separate facility alongside the main factory, filled with state-of-the-art machinery, light, order, and air-conditioned sterile cleanliness. Even the neatness is higher than in the old department in order to produce what our customers are looking for, especially Pagani. As Horatio's collaborator, Maurizio must embrace his crusade for perfection. When Pagani designs something, Asper must work out how to make it from a single block of aluminium. Sounds simple? Not with Pagani. Early in the design of the wire, the development of this two-part wheel hub became a labor of love. When, after a year of study and work, the first component was created, Pagani had some doubts about it. I was not convinced, because there were many bolts, there were many components and parts that could break, and for me, it wasn't aesthetically the best. So the two companies worked together to develop a totally new single-part wheel hub. Of course, it seems a very simple result now, but it required deep research and almost one year of manufacturing. It's not been easy to make, to achieve this result. It may not have been easy, but the end result cleverly combines two parts into one, saves weight, is cheaper to manufacture, and, for Horatio at least, is worthy of exhibition in a gallery. But apply that approach to 260 different components, and Asper had their work cut out. Horatio has made Asper his collaborators, not his suppliers, and he has made them better. The facility they created for Pagani has now attracted over 15 new clients, and business is booming. For Horatio, this tough, no-compromise approach is essential to achieve his perfect car. So he spent years building up an international network of tried and trusted collaborators, working closely to develop his tires, engine, gearbox. In all, over 95% of the car. For the leather interiors, he chose a small company near Turin, who he felt were ready to think outside the box. Salt is a handcraft leather factory that's been producing luxury interiors for cars, private planes, and even helicopters for decades. And here, Horatio found another kindred spirit. Uh, 
For us, it's very important to work with Pagani, but it is also a challenge at the same time. It is hard to obtain what he wants because he is a very particular person who always